I'm gonna take a little nap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, 15 miles from Cumberland Gap. thing he does see singing while he's playing like that. A lot of the old time fiddlers that I knew, they sang and played at the same time. And the era that I was coming up, there wasn't too, not too many young kids doing it and learning new tunes that were technically maybe, you know, maybe a little bit harder on the left hand. You spent, had spent so much time trying to learn that there wasn't a lot of room to play. And, and it's hard. It's hard to just play the fiddle by itself and it's hard to sing, but doing it together like he's doing it, it's really, really, really hard. Well, that speaks to the a kind of change in role for the fiddle as as the violin became as old time music was eclipsed by bluegrass music, the role of the violin completely changes in bluegrass music, where it's this instrumentalist role. Right. Um, in old time, the fiddler was often the band leader. It was the guy Roy Acuff, for example. He'd sing and he'd play, and he'd, he might even be able to dance too, because some of those guys could do that too. You got a camera down there? <laughs> We're gonna put down a little bit of cornmeal here on the floor so we can slip around. Makes it slip a little bit better. Well, let's see here. How about a little bit of, How about let's play a little bit of ball of cabbage now? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you wanna play with me? gregarious nature of music, the way it brings people in. When you're playing it, it's, it's as if the audience is a member of the band, too. If you ever played square dances or contra dances, you know, it's, uh, it's really about that connection that you make with, with, with uh, people in motion. You know, you, it's inspiring. You can't help but tap your foot, even if you're not in the right time. You just can't help but tap it when you hear somebody make old time music. And it's important to note that that the old time music that that we're hearing here, it's not a relic, it's not a time piece, it's not behind glass, it's not uh, in a museum. It, it, we we play this professionally. We go out and play this every night, you know. And we listen to some records here from 1927 that I played last week on the Opry live. You know, it ain't dead. It's a uh, it's. Really, it's just getting started up again. And there's a whole new generation of people um, that are listening to it and cutting their teeth on on uh, their first uh, Riders in the Sky record or their first Old Crow Medicine Show album and, uh, and are headed, you know, headed back and looking for more just like it.
dying really fast playing like that. <laughs> I think one of the characteristics of, that makes it truly old time is you'll hear less like this, five or six different records of different guys playing. And it's really a different thing. It's really a different tune. And uh, I think that is a, you know, you don't see that in the, in the symphony hall. You don't see that in uh, the pop charts. You, you know, you, and it's got a, there's an improvisational aspect to it. There's a makeshift aspect to it. And the guy can't, can't tell what the great guy on the radio is doing, so he has to do something that he can do, you know, that works. And, um, you know, there's a lot of jack legs. That's why they call it fiddling. There's a whole lot of just fiddling around trying to find something that suits you and then that you can, you know, excite and entertain somebody else with, especially another fiddle player.